This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Growing up, Friday night was the best night of the week. My father would escort me to Blockbusters where I'd pick out a Will Ferrell film. I'd grab a bag of sweets, maybe a 7-Up, and I was about to have a crazy night. So you actually wrote that one girl looked like she was hurting for a squirting? Mm-hmm. Yeah, hurting for a squirting. I wrote that. In the 2000s, it felt like every single week there was a brand new iconic comedy film. Bora, Anchorman, Step Brothers. These films would create these kind of cultural memes. Can we just become best friends? Yep! Maybe you dress up as the characters for Halloween. But for some strange reason, in the last seven or so years, <laughs> comedy films have just disappeared. And today we're going to answer the question, why? Cancel culture. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe. Obviously, I'm just playing. There is much more to it than that. And today we're going to explore the death of the comedy film. What are you doing? I'm burying you. I'm alive, man. I'm alive. <laughs> So let's start with the history of comedy. You know, comedy was first discovered in 1886. That right there was a joke. Comedy is filled with jokes. That's the point. We make each other laugh, we reflect on life, society, hardships, funny things. We come together and share laughter. As early as the Greeks, there were comedy plays, and of course, you had your boy Shakespeare, who'd write banger after banger, redefining the English language, all whilst putting a little smile on your face. And then by the late 1800s to early 1900s, there would be the big screen cinema. Silent, silent. It was silent films. You weren't allowed to make noise. It was quiet. There was no technology to record audio. And so, one of the best things that you could translate with no audio was physical slapstick comedy. You had a man like Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, Harold Lloyd. These people had incredible physical comedy. Their, their movement was amazing. Many people point to people like Buster Keaton as the origins of the sport of parkour. But then into the mid 1900s, there would be the introduction of sound. We think too much and feel too little. Sounds now allowed people to drop witty, zingy one-liners. Much like the great joke that I delivered at the start of the video. As the different genres would come along, you'd have satire, parody, dark comedy, blockbusters, teen comedies, rom-coms, zom-coms, john-coms. Oh bloody hell. Sorry about that. Comedy as a genre has pretty much always been a dominant genre of film. Don't just take my word for it. I, ha I have the graphs to prove it. This graph right here shows us from 1943 to 2021 what the top grossing films genres were. And since the very beginning of this graph, comedy has always dominated. No matter what the era, what the world was going through, if, if people were being blown up in war, if there was the fear that the communists were going to take over, or that we were going to be decimated by nuclear bombs, people still like to laugh. Some would say that comedy was an escapism from reality during hard times. Sometimes comedy was a mirror to reflect some of the ills of society, a vessel for social critique. And some would say comedy would say the things that no one else was allowed to say. It was the jester who could insult the king to his face. And if we look at the history, the idea of comedy just completely dying seems impossible. It'd be like me saying water's gone out of fashion. Stop drinking your, your, your water. Drink some prime, you pussy. A potential scandal with the Buffalo PD surfaced today when the mayor demanded that <coughs> when the mayor demanded that the chief when the mayor demanded that the chief <coughs> And it seemed as though up until recently comedy films were just getting bigger and bigger. We're going by the statistics we looked at earlier, the comedy film was the biggest genre of movie in the 90s. I mean there were so many comedies, a lot of them shit to be honest. Didn't your mothers ever tell you not to play with guns? <laughs> But some of them were iconic. Now you have to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? And it was very often that it would be very particular actors and comedians that would be the main star of the successful comedy films. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey was known for his like maniac energy. He was crazy and strange, bombastic. And then you had your boy Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler was, was nothing like Jim Carrey. He was more laid back. He had sort of this juvenile, childish sense of humor. But Adam Sandler had a little something else. You know, he had, he had a heart. There were moments where he could really tug on your heartstrings. You know, he'd make you laugh one minute, then he'd make you cry the next. And so with the stage, Stage set in steps my favorite era of comedy films the 2000s before we continue with this video I want to give a massive shout out to a Squarespace Squarespace is the number one platform for building and creating your own personalized website. Competition these days when it comes to business is fierce. And a great way of separating yourself from your competition is having a beautiful website. And Squarespace is here to help. With tons of customizable templates, you can pick and choose anyone you like, 
customize them, tweak, turn some knobs, and voila, you have a beautiful website that conveys the quality of your company. Whatever it is you do, whether you're a freelancer or perhaps you run a clothing brand, maybe you're a PT. With Squarespace's tools such as e-commerce, email marketing, appointment scheduling, you'll be able to build a perfect website that will elevate your business to the next level. So be sure to check out squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy the Giant and to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. I am McLovin. For 400 years, that work has kept us down. What the f The 2000s, man. The 2000s was a, a beautiful era. It was a great time. It was the best time to be alive. Everyone was having fun. We're all happy. Music was cheesy. People were joking, having fun. 9-11 did happen. It wasn't so good. The wars, the financial crash. But we had good comedy films. And there was just so many memorable films in this era. Like, as I mentioned, Step Brothers, Borat, Anchorman, Blades of Glory, Hangover, 40-Year-Old Virgin. These were belly laugh bangers, chart-topping chucklers. In this era, it honestly felt like every few weeks there was a comedy film that would come out and just shape and redefine this era. Much like that genre-defining joke that I delivered at the start of the video. But in all of this genre, there would be one man that would dominate it all. And that was Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell? Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell was Will Ferrell. The Will Ferrell movie basically became its own genre in its own regard. The boy just had the golden touch. If you wanted to sell something in the 2000s, either put a picture of boobs, bum, or Will Ferrell's face on it. He just had this strange comedy where he was a, like a child in a grown 40 year old man's body. He'd play these absurd, ridiculous characters all the while keeping a very straight, serious face. From Anchorman to Elf, Step Brothers, Talladega Nights and Old School, these films will be remembered as some of the best of the 2000s. Will Ferrell is Ron Burgundy. Who's that handsome devil? And so I want to kind of analyze what makes these comedy films iconic and this iconicness that existed then but doesn't really exist now. Firstly, I would say they're were memes. They weren't called memes back then, but they were like these memorable jokes, these one-liners that people would then use and say in the real world. Step Brothers had boats and hoes. Did we just become best friends? So many activities. Borat had high five, great success. And then Zoolander had the blue still face. On top of memes, there were also these like hilarious standout scenes. Wait, you changed your name to McLovin? <laughs> Hangover with the blackjack scene where Alan became Rain Man, and Anchorman where they had the big fight scene. As well, there were very notable and defined characters that often dressed in a funny way. This style of dressing would become a costume that many would wear at Halloween. And so in the 2000s, things were going well. Maybe just a little too well. We were talking today, or yesterday rather, with Russell Peters about when was the last time you saw a good comedy movie, and can you make a good comedy movie anymore. Many say that 2014 was the last year of big blockbuster comedies, the year that comedy died. And that last iconic comedy film being 22 Jump Street, a sequel of 21 Jump Street, which was a kind of remake of an old TV show. 22 Jump Street had all of the key components of what I said made an iconic comedy film earlier. It had the meme one-liner with My name is Jeff. As well, it had the memorable scenes, like the slam poetry scene and the sequel end credit sequence. And like, after this film, it becomes really difficult to point to an iconic comedy film. One that no one would argue is a legendary comedy film. And that's not to say that there hasn't been good comedies or even great comedies, but none of these films really permeated society in the same way that something like 22 Jump Street did, or the countless other films in the last 20 years prior. It seemed as though, for whatever reason, Comedy had just died, and I got stats to prove it. As you can see, the yellow and the light orange are like comedy and rom-coms. Comedy films seem to have majorly fallen out of like the top performing films. In fact, only three years were they in the top 10 and that was 2010, 2012 and 2013. And there are a bunch of other stats and articles showing this decline. I'm not the only person who's noticed it. And so you might be wondering, why did it die? Every studio would put out several comedies every, every year and there was like 45 or 46 comedies in the theaters every year. And then now, last year, there was like six or seven. This is very complex and it isn't just cancel culture. That's a part of it we'll get into, but there are many different factors that all play together. Firstly, we'll start off with the rise of the superhero film. In 2008, Iron Man was released and now every single film is a superhero film, but it was all well and good in the beginning because other genres could exist. But then in around about 2016, superhero films did something particular. They became self-aware. You may be wondering why the red suit 
Well, that's so bad guys can't see me bleed. This guy's got the right idea. He wore the brown pants. Hear the music. Look at me, guys. I'm going to comment on the fact that superhero films are kind of corny. But I'm going to do it to the camera. Look how funny that is. So obviously you had the film Deadpool with the character who was kind of self-aware. You know, it was, it was like a tongue-in-cheek approach to a superhero film. And so many other superhero films came along and did the exact same kind of format and basically swallowed up comedy. Things like Guardians of the Galaxy or Thor 3. And even you would see some of these famous comedy actors move into superhero films. You had Paul Rudd, Chris Pratt. Pratt, Ryan Reynolds. And that's because whether you like it or not, superhero films and animation films are money printers. Pretty much, if you dig up some shit comic book that no one in its time read and just pump millions and millions of dollars into it, you got a blockbuster hit. As well, for many of the comedy stars of the 2000s and 2010s, they often wanted to expand their career. Like, only so long do you want to be a silly, goofy comedy actor. Sometimes you want to prove that you got depth and range. Laughter? Ha! Huh, that's below me. So more tamer superhero films and animation films started to really win over, especially in that family market, as well as like remakes of old classic hits. A lot of the time it comes down to franchises. Tried and tested characters that were popular at some point in the past tend to perform well because audiences trust that they liked it once, they're probably going to like it again. But most importantly, the most important part of why comedy films died is mainly international markets. I just want to take a quick second and remind you guys that we have just dropped the Afters podcast. I'm so proud of this. Oh yeah, Oppenheimer just felt like it was just too convoluted. It almost felt like a parody of a Christopher Nolan film. It's a place where me and my friends can just chat shit, be funny, talk about different topics. I know you guys are going to love it, so check that out if you like these sort of topics. We delve into them much deeper there. Links below. 21st century will belong. Our subject, the future of Chinese-American relations. Markets like China and Russia, and really anywhere else, are very different culturally to domestic American markets. In these markets, it's very easy to sell something like Fast and Furious 92, or Fridge Man, or some cute looking Pixar film that subtly touches on the desperation of human existence. It's far easier to sell these films to those markets because they're just big, visual, enjoyable films. Easy to dub and lots of it translates over. One of the main problems with comedy films is that jokes that might land in America might not be funny in different countries. What are you gonna do today, Napoleon? Whatever I feel like I wanna do. Gosh! It's far harder to sell American-centric comedies, where the humor often relies on the English language and a Western sense of humor, similar to that incredibly nuanced and culturally layered zinger that I dropped earlier. And then on top of all this, those markets, China and Russia particularly, have very high censorship. Many films that are sold in China have been re-edited to be appropriate for their, their country. Now, maybe a film shows some LGBT people, or maybe a film's poster shows a black guy too big, just slightly too, too large. Shrink him down and then we'll buy the film. Or perhaps the film shows a flag that China doesn't like. But then on top of foreign censorship, there is then also the issue of American censorship, aka cancel culture. Have they made it so dangerous in terms of like being canceled that comedy movies are no longer something you can do? Everybody knows you never go for me. Recently retired. You yeah. are? Uh, yes. So, hey, yeah. fuckers! Welcome to the neighborhood! My name is Craig. Um, the neighbor is a Nazi. Dope front lawn here. You and your homeboys can play on that. You know what? You can you can just say it looks good. <laughs> uh, right after you suck on these little Chinese nuts. So long, gay boys. Now, I can't lie, this is a very tired conversation, but it is very important in this story. As many understand, Hollywood is made up of very progressive people. It's a bit of an echo chamber, a, a hive mind of progressive political views. And a lot of these people don't believe in comedy in the sense of making fun of people who they consider below them. They have this idea of punching up and down, whereby if you're in a position of power societally or culturally, you can't make jokes of people who are below you. Comedy should punch up. You should never punch down. You should never punch down. Sometimes you've got to punch down. Like, if you're beating up a disabled toddler. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they say it's because, no, we're protecting minorities. Like, they're basically saying minorities haven't got a sense of humour. Which I personally find a strange attitude. It's sort of saying that I think you're below me. And in lots of communities and culture, comedy is meant to be an equaliser. It brings everyone together so that we can all laugh at ourselves and laugh at each other. So many of the comedies that were very popular in the 2000s and 2010s just couldn't be made now. 
So if you're worried about offending people and constantly thinking of that, you are not going to be very creative. So I think it has a disastrous effect. And this strain of thought really has dug deep into comedy. Some of the most iconic people of the 2000s and 2010s comedy era have definitely succumbed to this. If you take an example of Judd Apatow, he was the genius of many of these comedies and he has now completely changed his whole attitude on everything. He went from edgy comedies, edgy jokes, using the word gay as a slur and stuff like that, to now condemning comedians for making jokes that talk about trans people or gay people, etc. And then in what seemed like an act of penance for his previous sins. He made an entire rom-com about a gay couple with a full LGBT cast. To be bisexual awareness week and no one has acknowledged it. Let Please guys don't cancel me. I'm sorry for saying gay. You're a white suburban kid who's co-opting black culture. And then also you have Sasha Baron Cohen. He was known for just being edgy and really quite offensive. And so he too kissed the ring by basically took part in public self-flagging where he cancelled himself. You know what, right? Before anyone else does it, I am officially cancelling myself. And so with all of this, it leaves us in a really weird spot. And that is modern comedy films. They are kind of shit. You know, you watch comedies nowadays and you're like, no, this isn't a fucking comedy. You're not, where's the jokes? Like, where's the bits? It's bad. Yeah. Comedy's it's, gotten kind of bad, huh? Yeah, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Movie comedy. With the lack of them being made, the ones that are made, they just always have this, this thing of like, having to make some obvious political message. This comment is what we call a planet killer. I say we sit tight and assess. Why are these men looking at me? Yeah, they're also staring at me. Michael Penis! I brought the girl for you. Comedies these days just can't make non-political jokes. They can't just be funny for the sake of being funny. And so that leaves us with the future. Will comedy return? Is it completely dead? Surprisingly, I don't know the answer to that, but I do have my opinion. I think people do just crave comedy. They always will. You look through history, we've been through wars, etc. No time was too politically and culturally sensitive to have humor. Comedy hasn't disappeared, it's just moved into different avenues. Stand-up, podcasts, also sketch comedy creators on TikTok. You have people like Trevor Wallace, Jack Joseph, Drewski, and many more. The way I see it is I reckon this new wave of comedy podcasts, things like the Joe Rogan multiverse, and your mama's house. The, these podcasts that have now become hubs for comedians, there'll be this competitor to Hollywood, which will be these comedy podcast studios self-funding and releasing films. It's already started happening. And I think that the cultural sensitivity around cancel culture is coming back a bit and people are starting to loosen up. So in my opinion, I don't think it's ever going to return to the dominance that it used to be. But I think it will just become this indie thing that some films will pop off. And that's good. It's good to change. It's good for things to evolve. There is a problem of being too reminiscent of the past. Like, I love the 2000s and the 90s, but comedy has to change. You can't just remake that style. Hopefully all these challenges will force comedians to try new things, take more risks, much like the daring boundary pushing joke I delivered at the very start of this video. I'd be very interested in hearing your favorite comedy film of all time, so comment that below. And be sure to join us on the Afters podcast, where we'll talk about this topic and many others.